Estate and CX, the UK's number one estate and C podcast discussing the future of estate and C, entrepreneurship and business, host Mark Burgess and Rob Brady. In this episode of Estate and CX, I'm with Charlotte Cooper from Allen Cooper Estates. We delve into how they've managed to increase their market share after being market leaders, changes of staff and how it goes from transition from existing members to brand new teams, and also how the dynamics of working in a family of estate agents with your dad, your brother, and your sister working together. So I hope you enjoy this episode. So welcome to the show. Thank you. In our brand new studio oh, yeah. for anyone no, watching like on this. So this will be aired in probably in about a f- month's time or so. So Charlotte, um, come all the way down from Nuneaton, not Coventry. Yeah. <laughs> um, its own town. And you're from? Alan Cooper Estates, yeah. So you've been a client for us a couple of years now. Yeah. How many years now, actually? Oh, it's probably, yeah, it's been a little while. Probably from when you first had the the bait system, yeah. really. So when it was first starting to go into that side of the uh, customer journeys, but just for the market appraisals at that sort of stage. So, if, yeah, a few years or so now. Bait, the old bait system. Yeah, that's it. Um, for any listeners out there, that's that's old old technology of ours. Um, so you've been with us, and I and I'll be honest with you. I first came across like Alan Cooper Estates, just estate agents, just in like the names in the office, and like as as it's evolved, I sort of got got to know you. Obviously, met your dad actually at Christmas time for the first yeah. time. I think I think it was actually the first time we actually met. I in think it was person, the first time actually, we met in person. After even, a few years, yeah, after it? speaking so much over a few years. Yeah, the first time we met in person. And I wanted to get you to talk at Estate and CX at one point, purely because yeah. um, I really enjoyed the discussions you're having around how you're running your estate and see how you're setting up. And also for the listeners out there today to get an understanding that just because you might be ahead of it, how do you remain ahead of it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so... The background starting on where you set up or where you started in a state agency. Like I always like to say, what was like your first day like? Not maybe first, is it first unpaid or first paid day? Yeah, well, absolutely. So my dad started the business when I was just four weeks old wow. and then I joined at 16. So as a family, we very much lived and breathed a state agency. So I left straight from school, um, didn't go to college or university, but wanted to go into, dip my toe into the world of property. Um, so for me, it was very much just a case of starting out at 16, entering in and just seeing where it takes me, probably mm. not knowing where I wanted my career to go to mm. or where it would lead, but start that path. Mm. So your dad, so four weeks old, your dad yes. sits down. And yeah. what, um, like, was your dad corporate before? Or was he just decided to set up an estate agency or? Yeah, so he'd done it for probably around 15, 10 years, 10, 15 years, started at independence, but then had to turn around a company that needed some work and then thought actually I could I could step into this myself but he always says to me that first day of opening just waiting for the phone to ring I think that was quite a daunting moment yeah. for him um and then yeah watching him do what he loves and doing it every day mm. it showed me that I'd probably like to get into the same mm. watching him love what he does and still love love it now it made me think actually he's got the passion for it and I, Hence why I wanted to follow in his footsteps, really. Yeah, because quite interesting. When I met him at Christmas, like he's still very much like I actually really enjoy being out on the tours. I don't like I don't like running the business part. So hence why yeah. you're involved with it more so. But he's actually like and now it just frees him up to actually go out and speak to people and enjoy that element to it. So, like pre you actually officially starting there, what was like your early early memories of just being in an estate agency? Yeah, I remember going in when I was probably five years old. Um, with my little toy box, pretending it was my briefcase, just copying what he did, going in with my pieces of paper and sitting in the back and, and watching everyone, being on the phones, the phone ringing off the hook and um, very much looking at newspaper adverts. You know, my, my Sunday evenings growing up was my dad um, highlighting all the pictures of where they'd lay out in the newspaper and yeah. almost having to print them off to put them in the places so he could send it off for the newspaper advert. So for years, it was always just watching him do that aspect of it. So obviously it's changed so much from that now. Mm. Um, but that was my earliest memories, watching him set all the, these properties out on a piece of paper to go to the newspaper for later on in that week. Even just like the early days of um, those newspapers, even just before, like it being set up software wise I'm sure it would have been a massive job just to get that yeah 
in action. Yeah. And then so, <clears throat> 16 years old, like, I know obviously you had the passion there, but a lot of people are either forced into, you've got to pursue the following of your parents, and like your parents might push you upon you, or most people would say like to pursue a passion, you've got to go off to university and get the mm. d degree and further education. And like, I was never that person. I, I quit through my A-levels, realized this wasn't for me. So what what made you, what made you decide at 16 that further education and university wasn't the route for you? I know obviously you've got the part of the background with your dad breathing and eating the state agency. So like what? Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to, dip my toe into it and try it. And yeah. um, very much when I got there, I still wanted to prove myself. I wasn't probably ready to just stop learning. So that's when I went on and did my paths of doing my level three and level four. So for a short time, I'd split myself between being in the office mm. and also going out to do some training in Birmingham, which I did for quite a few times, a couple of weeks there, a couple of weeks back at the agency. So that gave me the transition between continuing my learning mm. and also having the real experience of just being in the office. And I also wanted to prove myself. I didn't just want to walk in at 16 and um, you know just start working. I wanted to show that I can carry on and mm. do those things in terms of the further qualifications and and show some worth there really. And then so like on that that sort of first period of time because I've worked I've worked in businesses where like their family are there and like you you got I've had in some businesses where the family had given much like priority and uh, the reverse of it like the family have been treated like the worst of them some yeah. of the employees because of that that part to it so like what was your what was your first role in th that split but what was your first role in the office was it negotiator administration yeah probably was very it? much kind of administration um answering a few calls booking a few viewings learning the ropes of all of those things really, um, mm. going out on a few accompanied viewings, very much just kind of finding out what, you know, the basics mm. and building on from that. Um, and it was a very slow transition. I simply didn't go in and, and run any, everything from day <laughs> one. And if anything, I think my dad probably erred on the side of caution for that reason, yeah. because the last thing we wanted to do is me just go in and have everything different. So for probably several years, even 10 years, it's been a long time kind of come in. Yeah. I've probably done a little, you know, taking that step back as opposed to if you just went in and, and went, you know, um, all out on trying lots of different things. So it was probably only COVID that really I took a, a further step than mm. I had for quite a few years, really. Wow. That, that, yeah, quite a long period of time, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Because when you did, you said you did your three, level three and four. Am I quite right saying that? Wasn't it like you were the youngest... Yeah. Was that, wasn't it? yeah. So I, when I did my level four, yeah. um, then you can go on to be, apply to be a fellow member of the National Association of Estate Agents. But they had to actually make an exception to the rule because I was the first person that had actually, usually you had to be in five years in the state agency uh, to have enough experience to do the level four. Yeah. But I went on and did it and passed it um, within a short time period. So they had to honor the fact that I could become a fellow member quite quite young actually um so yeah i was always trying to prove myself and always trying to exceed what i could do whether it be my level three level four and actually i don't, i think it was the first time i'd not met mark actually at that time but i think it was in about 2011 there was the pps awards and it, the same night that i think iceberg won the award for technology mm. it was the same night that i won young state agent of the year award so oh, wow. we'll so be at, at the time we hadn't really introduced and, and met yeah it's weird actually because that's when like the first time I met actually Mark an award actually was the Estes Awards and the yeah. rest is history. So there is something about going to some awards to some extent and meeting people or knowing of yeah. how a collaboration somewhere down the line might work. So when when you entered into your your dad's business, like what what did that look like as a business wise to maybe what it is today? Yeah, it's changed quite a bit. Yeah. Um, particularly over the past several years estate agency as a whole has, has, has changed, but I suppose also the way we look at things now yeah. is very different. We had um, a number of team that were with us for quite a long time. So we had a certain way then that was maintained, but now I think we've got you know, quite a new team that looks at things a little bit different. We have different processes in place, which makes everything so much easier, streamlined, mm. um, but it's quite a different estate agency now to to, as it was then really and let's dig into a little bit into that like change in a state agency sure yeah like 
you're so you're because you're real market leaders in your area. Yeah, yeah. Back when you joined, was that a similar sort of setup? So we've always done, been there or thereabouts with market leaders, and we yeah. certainly had, um, you know, one competitor that we're probably always level with yeah. for probably a great number of years. Probably talking, you know, fifteen years really. Um, it's predominantly been the past few years, probably three or four years, where it's it has really improved for us, which we're really fortunate with, but we can't just lay back and, mm. you know, take that for granted. So so old teams, you're still in the market leads to that prominent position. Yeah. Most businesses that I've either come across or try and work with, they want to change, but really they can't be asked because we're still at the front of it all. Or staff get a bit backlash when change happens because naturally people don't like change. Yeah. So how was that transition on Im implementing some of that stuff? And also, at that time, the second question to that really was that that time was, were you more involved in the operations of that or were you a part of the picture that your dad was trying to change? Because like, it's quite an interesting setup for you yeah. to come into a business, existing members of staff. Yeah. Although you've been around, there's still that preconceived bias. Like, I remember you I'm when you were like Alan's 10 years daughter, old. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was there, young like, Charlotte, you yeah. know, in, in the office. And, and that can be quite a, a hard thing to almost break out of. Yeah. Um, that I am now, you know, how I have my own job there and and way I manage things in, in our, my own right as well, really. Yeah. Um, and I suppose my dad sees that I'm the same age now as when he started the business. Uh, which he recognises. Mm. Um, and like I say, for COVID, it changed a lot for us. We suddenly had to go, as, as everybody did, overnight. And all the phone calls were di could only be diverted to one phone, and, and that one phone was mine. So I then very quickly, wow. it escalated everything, and I it excelled all the experience I had. Mm. So from probably just watching, learning for several years to very much then all of a sudden just being involved in the whole you know, running of the business probably happened over that 2020, 2021 period mm. for me. Um, we got particularly busy during that stamp duty holiday. So I certainly took on a lot more then. And then we had a few um, staff changes where we implemented a new team. And from there, that's when really, you know, the team we've got now, we probably as a business learned the importance of having a great team behind you mm. that want to take on the change, want to take on your mission and, yeah, that we run with it then. If it's okay, like that, just that change on that team was that a case of it was like a mutual agreement of like existing members maybe saying like we've had enough of it, or is it a case you recognise it? Because it's like yeah, we only had our first month, uh, first accelerator workshop program, and the lady we had talk, Julia talking there, we had like a peer to peer analyzer talking about your core, your mission, your values. And it's quite interesting, you know, one of the questions that one of the guys mentioned was like, uh, we're if um, someone's, someone doesn't match the core values, like, what do we do with them? And she's like, get rid of them. And it's like, but they've been with us some time. It's like, get rid of them because they don't match your core values. So how was that transition? Was it, was it an easy one? Yeah, was it, it was always probably mutual. It kind of just fell like that rather yeah. than, you know, retirement for some or, yeah, yeah. you know, mutually wanting to, to move, uh, you know, move on. So it kind of wasn't intentional, yeah. but how it came worked at the right out, time. you know, came at the right time yeah. um, for us as a business. And yeah, that's where we're and, at. And, and quite there. interesting, like for the new people starting to the existing members, no discredit to the existing members, like you said, obviously there was a difference in outlook and change towards that. Like people are s struggling to try and find decent members of staff in post COVID. So like, what have you found that's worked well for you in that, in the new members of you've joined on like has it been the recruitment process has it been how you've maybe changed a leadership or what what's enabled you to attract some people that you think oh you know i wish i had that member of staff back because they were just they were trusty that i knew what i could yeah. do with it so like what in that recruitment process of finding new people like what did you learn or what did you maybe do that you maybe could give out to listeners out there that might have helped them if they're struggling in that yeah, absolutely. And it is a big thing, isn't it? You, yeah. you know, taking on new people and it can be hard for, to go out there and, and find the right people. Um, but for us, it's, you know, giving somebody the opportunity where you can see actually they're really going to 
excel mm. and they're excited for the future of what you know what you want to achieve as, as much as that they do and and push forward so just having the the right qualities and, and you can build from there and did you recruit them yes yeah so do you do you, do you find it more like you know you talked about your i always say like you know owners have got to recruit from the values of themselves so did you find um your own design at hunger to yeah maybe move the dial a little bit more finding people of that similar ilk yeah absolutely you want to find people that you you know you, you can work well as a team yeah and that everybody can just strive for the same thing it makes it so much easier um and that's what we have at the moment like a great team a great unit that works together and then it just the rest just keeps working then mm. it just keeps sticking along because you all want the same same thing from it really and and age age type in average age type in your office nowadays to be honest, quite mixed. Yeah. Um, or the size of the team as well. Yeah. So we've, there's a total of eight of us. Yeah. Um, so we've got uh, myself, my dad, my brother as well, actually, being a family business, and then five five of us as well. Um, and that's very much um, all kind of, in a way, split up between two teams, you could say. Yeah. Uh, my dad and James predominantly just going out to put the houses on the market and yeah. the rest of us all now just able to take that that sales role. Mm -hmm. We haven't got to take on that extra extra administration support because we've got the, the system to do it. So mm -hmm. it's now just everybody can all follow the process through for everyone. How's that how's that dynamic work with like you, your brother and your dad? Absolutely fine. Um some people say they couldn't work with family. Yeah. I've known nothing else. Yeah. But actually I've, I love it. Really do really do love it. It works well. Um sometimes we have different ideas but we all you know, you know, wanting and, to be and so so on that on that part. Like, how do you? There's three of you. Yes. You all got different ideas. Yeah. Your dad might have ways of like experience. You might have new ways of thinking. Your brother might be, you know, he's on the ground doing valuations and stuff like that. So he's probably got his finger on the pulse a lot more as well. Like, how do you? How do you? How do you come together and make a decision? Without yeah. just being like emotionally led. I know, and, like, and <laughs> no, thankfully it never is really. It's it works well because. My dad can see how the state agency is, has evolved and he appreciates the fact that I want to kind of lean into technology, innovation, and, and he can see that it is going that way. And, and the reason that you do need to stay on top of these things, mm. it's when you shy away, avoid it. Mm. That's when you're going to struggle. It's going to go back to the old days. You yeah. know what I mean? Somewhere down the line, which is never going to happen. No, I know. So you're going to struggle if you avoid all the, the, the technology, you know, the way it's uh, the way it keeps moving. And... Is it is it help the fact that you've got you as a more operational and them like different the right seats like the right people in the right seats at the moment it seems like like if your dad was obviously trying to be more operational and then you're trying to be operational like it if you've got the right people in doing different positions sometimes it works better and from what I could speak when I was being to your dad over that summit, our summit. It's very much like I don't really want to care about that bit anymore. I just want yeah. I'm back to I'm in a position in my business now that I just want to do the enjoyable bits. Exactly. And you're left with he, yeah. the operational shit, which a yeah. lot of people don't want to do. No, which and I'm kind of going into it eager that you know that is really really something that I've just been thriving on mm -hmm. and trying to push for strength for, to strength. You know, um, in, he's very much happy to leave me to look at every other little aspect while he can go out and concentrate on the valuations. Whereas in the past, you know, there's a lot else that goes mm. with running a business mm. and he's able to hand over the reins, albeit it's been a long time that we've took that time to to get to that point. Um, but he recognises we're, we're there now. So it does make everything a lot easier to be able to mm. me handle and, and look at all those other aspects. Yeah, because I'm sure obviously like, you know, if you've got traditional estate owners out there, a lot of them don't necessarily have the operator they had the visionary person or someone not necessary to implement stuff. So if you're out there on the hamster wheel doing the valuations and trying to run all the teams and trying to implement new stuff and all that sort of side to it, it's like you never have enough hours in the day to do that. No. So actually releasing is a real good sign of leadership on yeah. your dad's part to Yeah. And also not to micromanage it because obviously there's emotional there's an emotion part to it being like I'm your dad and I'm like daughter, daughter yeah, dad situation. Yeah, we split it quite easily, so it works out quite well. But we do certainly like to implement change. If we feel that there needs to be a change, yeah. we won't sit on it. We, you know, we can at least look at it. We're quite quick to react, whether it be to like the market, yeah. other agents. Um, so if we feel that there needs to be a change, you know, we'll have a chat and within 48 hours, 
you know, we'll think, right, okay, well, let's look to get this, wow. you know, add this now. And being an independent, you know, we've not got to go through that corporate process of waiting for something to be signed off or, you know, yeah. weeks or, or anything. So we're very quick to react to that, you know, somebody else has maybe put a few houses on. Okay, well, why is that then? What do we need to do? Um, being market leaders, we keep a very close eye on it all, really. So, like... Has it always been that way, change-wise? I know, obviously, you had the old members of staff, but like, is it is it because of you coming as that one to evolve your individuality and like prove yourself? Yeah. Because, like, again, forty-eight hours is a very quick period of time in for independence. Some people procrastinate, overthink, yeah. overanalyze it, and I always say, like, I'd, I always, I always remember a, someone I had a client a couple of years ago, and she was saying about. Uh, newsletters not being she's oh my newsletter isn't being seen so much and I'm not willing to put this data in and I'm saying like you've got like seven and a half thousand people in an Excel spreadsheet but your views are on an opinion not on data the fact that like you're saying that the news newsletter open rate might not be good but you can't see it because you haven't got the seven and a half thousand people in the database to read it mm. and it's sometimes like those simple things that can just like suffocate someone just to be I don't know, overanalyze it and I'm going to think the outcome without actually seeing the outcome. Yeah, and it's it's hard to take them steps sometimes because actually we can sometimes sit on these things and actually, and I'm not, I've done it as well in the past and we're always still developing and learning on some, some areas yeah. um, and it can be a case of that's a good idea but it's a big step to take it forward. A question though, like, have you got any bad ones that you've that you've done you thought, shit, we shouldn't have done that? No, it's kind of, you know, we, we're not going to, you know, we're not taking, when we say 48 hours, not big yeah. risks, but small implementing changes yeah. that we need to kind of keep an eye on what is out there. You know, can we move forward with it, even if it's just sorting out some, you know, graphics to bring in different types of services we do and mm -hmm. things like that, making things stand out more and making yourself more prominent or which content. So, because everybody else can get everything out there, but it's what you do with it. it mm. It's not just advertising, it's how you advertise, or not just what you give to people, but it's the content you're giving yeah. to them. And what, like change internally within your teams, like how does that process roll out? Do you, do you sit down with them and say, right, we've got to have this new idea? If you if Because sometimes you, you I can come across a lot of owners out there who are change obsessed, and then all of a sudden, like the direction of the team's like, oh, it's not another, not another thing they're looking to change or implement. Because sometimes they just don't really communicate what they're doing. It's just confusion for the teams. Sure. Yeah. So, like, is there a process you have when you're looking to do maybe a bigger change? Like, how do you involve your teams within that? Yeah, so it's it's all communication as, yeah. as much as part of the job with and with your team really. Um, and, and sometimes these changes are very small, and it might just be a case of slightly changing how we do something to make the process easier for everybody and it's always communicated probably f as much from the offset in a way especially with the team we've got now because they're very much happy to embrace it and mm. and see that change and make it easier for them and us and mm. and the job itself um, but yeah it's communicating it throughout really and, and making them see what how it is going to help yeah that's a bit how he's going to see the see part to it because i think that's where it sometimes gets lost it's like we're going to make this change but yeah, what's a the lot true of them advantage? Are, yeah, of it, like, a know? lot of them are just confused and yeah. like, like, oh, okay, what, what's the outcome here? Like, where do we, where do we measure the metrics on this? Um, so, like, 20, 2020 COVID hits. You said obviously there's a big shift. Like, you became that person that was picking up the phone all the time. There was a shift in that leadership, and that's really when I started to get involved more with you because yeah. we moved into life cycle because we had you know, bait before was pretty much. You did it yourself, and if yeah. there's any issues, it goes to support. And if yeah. you had our upgraded packages, they do it for you and stuff like that. So, like, you moved into life cycle, and that's where we started to. It was really probably about a year afterwards. I think we started to actually have a conversation because I know you were like trying to run around trying to get you know like most agents like I'm just going to yeah. keep my head above water with this yeah. crazy stuff that's going on. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then we started to sit down and start st strategically look at stuff and what I've enjoyed about our coaching sessions is that change mentality that you've got, but you've, you quite critically look at stuff yeah. and then implement stuff. And every time I've met you, you seem to be getting wider and wider and wider away from the competition. Yeah. Which is, which is awesome to see because a lot of the time we say that if you implement stuff and try and do this, this will happen. And also, like, if you are ahead of the pack, you want to make sure you 
widen that gap. Yes. And like Mark's openly talked about over the years, like as the years go on and people start to embrace data and look yeah. at how things are differently done, there's going to be agents out there who are either going to wipe out the industry or there's going to be people that are going to be really evolved in that. Um, how they do things and then widen the gap and all of a sudden like your competitors on the road are going to think like three years down the line think how the hell do they did that yeah so obviously without giving like your, your secrets <laughs> away like what's what's happened from that 2020 period yeah. moving into life cycle and in, that's it, in what you've yeah. looked at like but other agents they might feel like gosh it's a blink of an eye and it's happened yeah and that's how they might perhaps see it but then for us we know that it's it's years that it, you know it can take proper to, dedication yeah you know it's um we've been with life cycle since it very started and we had that transition mm. from our uh, previous system to to how we use it now and fully embrace it and it's certainly how you use it and what you put into it mm. you get more you get more back um but we've certainly seen a huge shift particularly since the start of this year mm. um in market share yeah, because it seems like every year I message you and we have those chats and you're like, oh, it's like yeah. it's getting busier and busier. Yeah. Um, like what, like you said, like I've had agents who, who take life cycle and think they just don't do anything with it and then hope that, yeah, it's going to change it and then yeah. get frustrated <laughs> that it hasn't done anything. It's because it's like if you're a shit agent, life cycle only show that you're a shit agent because yeah. you've got no strategies. So like with the evolution of moving into a system like life cycle, maybe to a, an existing CRM where it does really nothing with it, what, how have you evolved in your marketing techniques? Because you seem to have evolved in every time we've had conversations around new ways of working, new ways of thinking. Yeah. So like, what what does marketing look like for you now compared to maybe five years ago? Yeah, and that's it. And it's changed so much. I mean, quickly going back to literally years ago. Um, newspapers, The, the yeah. newspaper. <laughs> you could almost, you could make yourself seem like the biggest agent just by almost probably buying the most number yeah, of like pages. 12, 14, yeah, yeah, 12, buying the pa no, pages, yeah. most number of pages in the paper. Yeah. And you could almost give yourself the appearance that you're the big agent and, and probably get it, you know, get the interest that way. Whereas nowadays, you know, everybody is online and it's how you're marketing through your platforms yeah. that you're going to get the interest. Um, so you, it's a yeah, very different era and it's working that way of, right, how are we gonna reach out to these people? Um, putting them on the right journey. Um, we have a great team now who are deeply empathetic to speaking to people, asking the right questions so that anybody that reaches out to us, we can make sure that they're going on to the right customer journey. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the marketing, it's keeping that presence. Yeah. You know, whichever way you go down the different channels, it's, it's keeping that presence there and, and that consistency that you are just there all, all of the time. So like attracting clients in, like you've got naturally a kudos of being number one agent or a lot, you know, over the years being that top spotted agent, maybe the pick of three, you, you naturally get the repeat business or that part because it's, you know, people can visually see you're strong in the area. Like on top of that, is it being predominantly Facebook ads, Google ads? Um, like what's been your most... Uh, platform you maybe developed more into we've probably covered quite a few different areas yeah. I mean there's not just one area we focus on yeah because if we can kind of increase the um, the way we're doing things by one percent better on each of those things it's all gonna 100%. raise up so rather than throwing everything into one section and just hoping it works out when we try that yeah um, we very much you know we'll go with the Google ads and get succession from them but it's then not just having the Google ads it's what you do with that information Afters. thereafter yeah uh, that's just a, a scratch on the surface of how you're helping somebody but yeah. if you don't use it the right way they're not going to remember that you did a valpal lead through that agent or however they did it mm. you know it's um it's developing it from there so it's reaching out to people through the facebook ads or the google ads or allowing them to come to you through those ads and then from there being able to keep them onto the right the right path because mm. From what I can see from that is like you being very consistent with that. I know obviously we had, I remember last year you had a little bit of like, oh, I haven't just updated it, I haven't tweaked a little bit. Like y you've self-taught yourself to do that really, haven't you? Then yeah. outsourcing it. So right, what, 
as an operations person, you've got a team, you're trying to run stuff, you're trying to do other bits. Like what made you decide that you wanted to look at that in-house rather than? I very much like to know how something works. Yeah. And with running the business now, I, I like to give it everything and almost probably have the fear of not doing it well enough or not doing enough. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's very much thinking, right, well, actually, I can if I can make sure I can see how this can work, then I can monitor it. I can track it better and yeah. keep an eye on that. And then there's certainly, you know, fantastic people out there who can do that. And perhaps, you know, if it was my dad running the Google ads, he would have to outsource and yeah, yeah. look at different bits. But if you can set it up right and monitor it, you know, then it's going to be bringing it back. And how did you learn that? So I probably threw myself in with like, Google Ads team. Yeah, yeah. Google Ads team, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly that. And at the same time that others were also kind of setting it up, um, the WhatsApp group for Iceberg Lifecycle is fantastic. Yeah. And there's so much information out there um, that's put in there. So yeah, probably going through it a few at the same time as a few others, really. Yeah. I remember someone like becoming a Google, well, I think it's Clint became a Google ad specialist and his first times he started doing it on YouTube. Yeah, some random exactly. guy in America. Yeah, and, and he's been somebody there. I've checked in with and it, yeah, he's fantastic. So, so um, you learnt, you've learnt that part to it. So you've like, understanding is really what you were saying that from that part is like newspapers used to be where you used to attract the clients, your leaflets, your letters and stuff like that. And obviously as you're adopting the digital age, it's more like, okay, where does these new distrib forms of distribution channels come through? Because I see a lot in the industry that they say letters and leaflets are still working, and yes, you will get success of it, but you're always that's always a short term part to it. And what we see with a lot of clients is that as they start to build longer term strategies, like you know, you know, like you said, like Google Ads and Facebook Ads, the stuff that coming from that are not immediate turn into business. No. They're things that you work with and work on the journeys, and then you work on how you nurture those people and reach out to them at the particular time and we have an industry where it's quite short-term thinking yeah and as, and as a human species i think it's short-term thinking we like to do business in that way but obviously it seems like you've taken that longer term approach to it and what i can see in the last few years that that's starting to pay off even greater because you've got that repeat business coming through the brand awareness but you've got another layer now of people you've been nurturing for quite some time yeah definitely so we, we don't go down the approach of door knocking or leaflet dropping um you probably won't need to though because your, your dad and your brother are probably out all day knocking like, we, we, like we knock don't the doors actually that, have time yeah. <laughs> yeah. still knocking um so yeah we don't we don't need to go down you know that path but we do nurture the people and put them on the right journey because yeah when they first come to you they're not always ready but it's being able to check in with them yeah. over time and you're there when they come to you, whether it be a few months later or a few years. So at any point, we're there for them. And it's quite interesting because you have like the system now, without it being a life cycle advert, you can actually see people. Like yeah. you think, oh my God, like they've been in there for like two years and they've come yeah. through. Whereas before in the past, it'd be a case of like, oh, they just saw a board. And yeah. you're like, so it's, it is, you can really see that part to it. Um, so... You've said in like you said this year it's been a even greater year than maybe the last year, and you're really pushing yourself away from uh, pulling yourself away from people. Like, have you worked out why that's happening? I think it's the um, it's everything taken into consideration that we've been doing mm. has probably all of a sudden come to the forefront, and in a way, the more that we've been able to put on the market in turn now somebody that's viewing will be able to view several of us and in, it only then seems the right opportunity for mm. us to then help them sell theirs mm. so we've just been on this cycle um this year which has really propelled us mm. forward because even something quite basic i often which i can't quite believe get told by people that, that you know buyers out there that we're the only agent that are sending them properties in the area that are potentially of interest to them, mm. which for me something, sounds something so basic, and I would assume that every other agent it, in the town is doing it, but they just apparently get told, you know. It's on right move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To, to look on right move, or, oh yeah. yeah, we'll send you something, but then never get received anything. So something so basic, I would assume as that, yeah. is actually even something that we're just doing that 
you, you know, and for that, that's, you know. But that, but it's, I mean, as a former agent myself, like you, you do, you can get into a thing of having conversations and arguments with agents because I say we do this all the time. Like, we, like I was having only a few years ago, I had one guy who said, I don't, I don't need a database to call people out on. I call everyone. And I was like, how many people is in your CRM? 10,000 people. I was like, how many calls do you make a day? 10. I was like, so how do you, how do you physically say you have meaningful conversations regularly with 10,000 people yeah. when you only call 10 people a day? I was like, you're never going to get through that in like three years. So, that's not that's bullshit yeah um so and the same with registrations mark openly says about it. mark's obviously been trying to find a particular house he wants for a few years and it's up in the upper quartile of the market and he said i only get sent stuff where it's like sticking around and he mm. gets sent it but he said i've already seen that on right move four weeks before and i've never even sent it no. so i think even the the ability of ease of just that technology just taking care of that but it, there has to be acceptance of we're just going to let that do that like we know it's working. Yeah. We know it's going out to people. We haven't got to overanalyze it um, because it's working because people are telling us that. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, and people really appreciate, you know, what we se we send to them. Mm. But we've got 15,300 people mm. on our system. So we couldn't be calling them every day. Yeah. It, you know, it's not achievable. But yet we still have the communication mm. with every, sing every single person that wants it. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, and it's acceptable for anyone. Tom, anyone wants to register as a buyer, they can just do it instantly. Yeah. Um, obviously, I, again, I don't want it to be like a life cycle advert, because it, it, but it's interesting because it's you're a, a large agency, you don't necessarily have to look at this part because you can just be like, ah, oh, well, just we're good anyway now. We we don't need to change, but it's refreshing to find an agency who is at the forefront of it, but still looking at it from a perspective of feeling like you're a new starter. Yes to make sure you maintain it and continue looking at that technology and continue looking at new ways of improving. And from what I can see, it's more like ease of use to the customer to get the details and have the experience with you. You mentioned about journeys and like nurturing and stuff like that. For anyone listening out there, like what, what, does, what does that mean to you? Yeah, so, and for me, probably a, a few years ago, it was a completely <laughs> yeah, concept yeah. As, as well, I, really. I remember those first yeah, sessions. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Probably trying to explain it to me and uh, how important it is. But over the years, that's become very much more apparent. Yeah, I remember so, it like yeah, there was a point where you were like, I yeah, get this now. Complete light bulb moment. Yeah. Um, and sitting down there with a huge piece of paper thinking, right, where do I even start with this? And I remember messaging you going, hang on, where am I starting with this yeah, again? Yeah. You know, which way does it go? Um, but yeah, it's very important. So it's a case of very much from the offset of when people contact us or mm. reach out through an advert, um, we're putting them on the right journey, which is actually just really the way we contact them and mm. what we contact them with. So it's, it's only going to be relevant stuff to if they're needing to sell or if they're a first time buyer. Mm. And so that we can then monitor that and contact them about just what's concerning them mm. um, and also reminding them that we're there for when they're ready. It's like digital customer experience, I call yeah. it. Yeah, because again, like a lot of people associate journeys is like an instant valuation, a drip feed them out, a couple of things and that's it. And it's yeah. like, that's, that is like going back to like your, you're talking about your newspapers. That's like old ways of working even yeah. in that digital space to what you do now. And if you, um, have you found that experience with going into that new ways of working, new ways of thinking, like as from a from a perspective of how you operate as a business? Do you do you, do you reach out to those people more, like from phone wise, or do you just allow allow them to just come to you as a when? Like is that is there yeah. a blend or um, a bit of both? It's it's kind of uh, monitoring it how much they're looking at things in terms of you know. Are they going to want to appreciate us reaching out? Is it the time for them? Mm. So monitoring what they're, which stage they're at. Yeah. And reaching out at the right time. Mm. So you're much more successful. Mm. Yeah, because I think that's that's the benefit part too. I yeah. think like, I think like Paul's, Paul's in the studio here and we were only talking off camera before we jumped on, uh, he jumps on as a guest and we were talking about there still needs to be a phone call, need for a phone call. Yeah, there's definitely there's still the yeah. need for communication. And as much as estate agency has evolved, it's still very much a people business, yeah. communication. And it's having that, um, being there for people, which I think is definitely going the way of probably several years, 10 years ago, it was very much, there was a lot of corporates. But I think now people mm. are still 
if more than ever, appreciating the the independence, um, having that personable, just honest you know, conversation with yeah, a human absolutely. being rather than just being put in that machine and yeah. just chucked out at the end, and whether you hopefully sell or absolutely. hopefully buy. Yeah. Um, so that leads on to probably a final question: like, where do you see the future of estate agency? Certainly, a lot of change. Um, in terms of innovation, I think that's the the rate of change mm. is moving on very quickly. Um, where we, we can see it go in terms of technology, I think it's always changing. And in a way, what we'd say today, we couldn't necessarily predict, mm. you know, in a couple of years because we've seen changes that we wouldn't necessarily see were coming. I think it's always going to be very much a communication business that mm. we need to maintain and have that personal approach with people mm. um, but it is very much just keeping uh, keeping a close eye on it it's so leaning into the technology of it so like technology wise like if you were if you didn't have us and what we were doing and you were sat down, down uh, with your with your dad and your brother and you're like right let's look at maybe where the industry's going like what would you be looking at right now if you know we've got client people are non-clients of ours listening to this show and they're probably not in those WhatsApp groups or we've got like Mark just sending you random stuff around like how it's going to, world's going to completely change in the next five, yeah. 10 years. So like, would there be anything that you would be, or even outside life cycle now, is there anything you're looking for the future going, actually, we're probably going to, we're probably interested in doing this a bit more or less yeah, of that? There's a, there's a lot more things coming in now, isn't there, with AI and everything like that. So that's a, a world that I think, although we've got um, some aspects of it, we're almost release to you know i think what it can do mm. we almost probably don't know how capable it is at the moment mm. um so that'll be an interesting thing of how that that develops for us all really but it, it's very much looking forward and thinking right where are the changes going to come in mm. that we need to focus on but you can't throw yourself at everything and mm. you need to concentrate on the important things that are going to just develop your business for you and mm. um, you could otherwise you'd be spending a lot of money and actually probably all your time looking at all the roots magpie syndrome getting distracted because that's what i yeah. feel like what's always been nice with your brand is that you've been almost on the sideline of of all of it you're still having the conversations etc but without like us meeting it's not like you're openly in any of the facebook groups or anything like that it tends to be in a part of only our community yeah and I do find that, you know, there's a there's a few members AB out there, a lot of agents out there who are in those multiple groups and all of a sudden it's like this new thing here and this new thing here and this new thing yeah. here. And it's like when are you ever gonna implement one of them? Uh, yeah, and you could you spend a lot of time jumping onto everything or jumping on that idea to that idea. Yeah. But it's focusing on the important ones that are gonna propel you forward and yeah. particularly as we are very busy, we'll wanna make sure if we have an idea, we move forward with it quickly. Yeah. But it's the right idea that's gonna have an advantage to the business and that's why it then helps you know going back to set, telling it to the team members they're happy to take things on yeah um that it's going to be of advantage to them but we don't just want to be wasting our time you know the money's money in the it. business just yeah. to, just for sake of like a new new shiny new project a new fad that's just yeah. gonna you know th the world isn't quite ready for or your customers aren't quite ready for and that's not the 48 hour yeah <laughs> exactly change. yeah they're small long. changes but we're gonna you know it's got to be the right time for for these things and and as a business like finally like as a business do you get involved with video is that something you're looking to implement further starting to look to implement it and i know we've spoke on it for a little bit of a time now yeah. um and there's been probably and that's where some areas we've got to develop i know mm. i've probably gave you a few excuses of why we haven't yet jumped onto it so um yeah i don't think it's it's too late because people are still doing it mm. but it's an area then we're looking at, you know, it, but it's quite interesting stuff. because like you've grown and excelled in an area without necessarily doing that yeah and that's another exciting space to see that because you yeah. think about the journeys and stuff like that if you if you're adding videos into those and created automated journeys that have got videos in them like whoever's recording those so say you did the first time buy one and it was a six part one and you're on there or your dad's on there your brother's on there whoever in the member staff is in there that first time buyers getting those pieces, yeah. they're actually physically meeting you virtually, but they f like we had when we first met. Do we have we met before? Like yeah. You feel like you know yeah. somebody, absolutely. And it brings another and and that's the the thing which is exciting because we've really been able to increase our market share to probably 37, 40 percent wow. this year that we've got of the market. Um yet we've still got a lot more to develop. And like finally, like just on that last point. 
when you when you when you said you were starting the business and you were still one of those one of those three maybe or one of those two up there, like what was your market share there? Like has it has it like what's just been the stages? Has it been Yeah, and like it was it's certainly it it's been steadier, but yeah. then it's it has really increased as a, as of recent. But yeah, initially you might have been talking probably, you know, four or five years back, twelve, thirteen percent. Wow. Um and then last year probably, you know, more consistently for the past eighteen months, twenty you know, 20%, 25%, and then literally in the past probably a uh, few months, really. And 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 have you seen, has it been a drop-off in other agents or has it been an increase on your, the others who are in that mix? Yeah, we probably don't have a... Um, everybody else is probably there or thereabouts. Yeah. We've almost created our own little bubble of... Um, of activity yeah the market for us is moving is moving well um so it is just very much a case of keeping an eye on that but yeah you can't lie down yeah you can't think okay things are moving well we're very fortunate to have people that uh, people recommend or people see our adverts but you've just got to keep thinking how can you improve mm -hmm. how can you give them a better service or put yourself in front of the people that aren't yet seeing you or that's that's the, the pe that's out. the key i think like yeah. because i think if you go back to short-term marketing messages and you're constantly on that you're only dealing with the people that are in the market now yeah not who are i was only saying to an agent yesterday um they were talking about waiting lists how can you create a waiting list you can do it right now because of the amount of market demand you have he said no, it's just not impossible it's impossible and we went through and he's actually said well i can't I can't do any valuations of my demands up until now, like uh, end of March. I said, you have effectively got a waiting list. You just don't pro don't yeah. promote it. Um, and having the views of like, okay, well, March is almost coming to an end and I've got people booked in for April. Sometimes agents associate that that can't be physically possible because it's, you know, they want to come on. They want to see me next week. But it's like, it's only because you're not marketing the fact of like that decision for them to have that valuation might have been taken six months a year. Yeah. And if you've got those people before and you've, you do the mindset of it's not, I've got their details. They've got to do business with me now. I'll just bin them. Mm. And you think about, okay, how do we influence those people? I say like, that can happen. You can put people in those, that sort of journey so that as they're coming to the market, they're thinking, they know. They're, they're busy. They're, they're really busy. Yeah, they're yeah. really busy. Like they're really busy in a month, two months down the line, and they've already told us that. So like we we better get yeah. them get us booked in, and that that's creates a whole different offering to being that absolutely one or three. Or and we we say that to people now. You know, people say to me, it's kind of been January, February, and uh, and they're thinking, oh, I'm going to move this year, and it's like, well, you know, let's think about actually getting the ball rolling because you know time will time will just go, and then it's all about creating that. Um, that steps with them, mm. so they know, you know, how your time scale will work and the process of it. And yeah, that that's something that you'll be working with them, you know, for some time sometimes mm. um, to allow them. Yeah, because I think that's it's proven what you're saying because obviously you've got your market share, but you've increased it off the back of finding people off market and getting as they come into the market ready so that actually they come on with you and that, and that process works and they've obviously getting matches and all sorts of stuff. So it's been brilliant to hear your journey. So if anyone is out there listening and they might be an agent who is either in one of those three and thinks, okay, like how do we, how do we get a little bit more ahead of this? Um, obviously not in your area um, or, or an agent who might be having an established agency like your dad had and then, needs to go through that process of change like where can they connect with you where's the best place to find you because you're not in most agency groups like yeah yeah right? Is that's it yeah on on instagram uh, yeah. facebook um yeah absolutely happy to kind of reach out and and guide people and it is it's a big step you know it, when you know something and have a process that you've stuck to for so long it is really hard to think right should we take it further forward? Where mm. can we move on from that? So it's a big step to take, but once you start moving into it, it you, you realise that the possibilities of it. Yeah, it's that fear, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Thanks for joining today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks absolutely. for listening to this Estate Agency X podcast. 
Can you make sure that you're actually subscribed to this podcast channel if you liked the content? Uh, it helps us massively to get better guests and it just helps us generally. So you might think you're subscribed, but just have a double check whatever your um, podcast platform of preference is that you're actually subscribed. And then that way we can continue to grow the channel and get better and better guests for you.